Hello guys, in today's video we are going to talk about the Seidel algorithm for the all pairs shortest path problem. The Seidel algorithm designed to solve the all pairs shortest path for undirected, unweighted and connected graphs. We will try to explain the algorithm and in detail and the all pairs shortest path problem too. But before getting into the action, let's match our expectations. I'm starting this topic by myself and my videos depend on the wisdom of the crowd, a topic that really fascinates me. Therefore, if you find any mistake in what I say, please let me know in the comment section below. I promise to read all comments and re-upload if necessary. Also, please subscribe to my channel, I tend to upload many videos on this topic. Before talking about this ideal algorithm, it is essential to understand what the all pairs shortest path problem is. Well, the goal of the problem is to describe the shortest path between any two vertices of the graph. Since the algorithm does not work with weighted graphs, the shortest path between two vertices is determined by the number of edges in the path between the vertices. But generally speaking, if the edges were weighted, we would look for the lightest edges. The Seidel algorithm solves the APSP all per shortest path problem with an expected time of O number of vertices to the power of 2.373 multiplied by log 2 the number of vertices. The runtime is better than the runtime of the breadth first search algorithm, which solves the problem too. Running VFS from every vertex in the graph would cost O number of vertices multiplied by O number of vertices plus number of edges. Now, since there, are, there could be uh, the number of vertices to the power of 2 edges at most, this could be O number of vertices to the power of 3. Alrighty, let us see the Seidel algorithm. Alrighty, Seidel algorithm for APSP problem. This algorithm uses fast matrices multiplication to solve the all per shortest path problem. We assume our undirected, unweighted graph is connected. Otherwise, the algorithm can be executed separately for each connected component. Let graph G equals VE be our undirected, unweighted and connected graph, and A its Boolean adjacency matrix. Reminder, say our graph is the following, this one. The adjacency matrix for it would be the following, this one. Now. The diagonal is always zero out to prevent self-loops. Now, as you can see, when there is an edge between two vertices, the cell corresponds to that edge in the adjacency matrix equals to 1. On directed graphs, two cells correspond to each edge. Expect the diagonal cells reserved for the self-edges. When there is no edge, the correspond cell would be equal to zero. There is no edge between vertex C, this one and this one, and, and vertex B. Hence, the correspond source equals zero. We would consider the matrix A to the power of two represents the matrix A, Boolean matrices multiplication of the adjacency matrix A, but again, we would zero out the diagonal cells we would build the graph g tag equals v e tag with the same set of vertices of graph g with all the edges of that graph plus an additional edge for every path and our path consists of three vertices v0, v1 and v2 in graph g and in graph g tag there is an edge v0, v2 forming a clique of the size of 3. In other words, we would introduce the edge CB in graph G tag for our example graph above this edge. In other words, the adjacency matrix for graph G tag is A tag equals A to the power of 2 unite with the matrix A. Multi edges is not allowed. Since we are considering two graphs, we make use of two different functions to denote the cost of the shortest path for each one of the graphs. In particular, let delta uv denote the length for the shortest path in graph g between the vertices u and v and let delta tag uv denote the length of the shortest path in the graph g tag between these edges. 
Notice that the shortest path in GraphG tag is about half the length of the shortest path in GraphG between any given two vertices. In other words, delta tag uv equals delta uv divided by 2, rounded up. That is because the GraphG tag introduces additional edge between every three connected vertices in GraphG. These edges serve as shortcuts, help us to skip in path P tag every other vertex from the path P in GraphG. We would now introduce an algorithm that solves the old pursued path problem in undirected, unweighted graphs. Afterwards, we would see how to determine the parity of the length of the path, which plays an essential role in the algorithm we are about to see. Let delta tag be the distance matrix defined by the shortest path indicator for graph G tag, delta tag, and let delta be the distance matrix defined by the shortest path indicator for graph G, delta. We would compute delta tag and use the values in delta tag to compute the values in delta. And here is our first algorithm. It is not the side algorithm yet. APSP1 receives adjacency matrix A. First line. If A is all ones, expect for the diagonal. Return matrix A. This is our solution. Line 3. Else, distance matrix delta tag equals APSP1, and we are sending in this recursive call A to the power of 2, unite with A. Line 4. For each two vertices u, v in v, if delta u, v is an odd number, line 6, delta u, v equals 2 delta tag u, v minus 1, line 7, else delta u, v equals 2 delta tag u, v, line 8, return the distance matrix delta. The base case of our algorithm is when it is a clique, all edges of the graph exist, and so the adjacency matrix A is all ones except the diagonal. In that case, the shortest path between any pair of vertices is 1, and 0 from any vertex to itself. In that case, the matrix A is the solution for the all pair shortest path problem. We would now determine the parity of the shortest path indicator, delta u v, before the value of delta u v is actually known. For a pair of vertices u v, let w be a vertex neighbor of vertex v, they share an edge, then by the triangle inequality, delta u v minus 1 is lesser or equal to delta u w and notice that u and w are not necessarily neighbors lesser or equal to delta u v plus 1 we are going to consider four ways depending on the parity of delta u v and delta u w option 1 if delta u v equals to delta u w modulo 2 they are both even or they are both odd in either case, by the triangle inequality, delta u v equals delta u w. This implies that vertex w is not on a shortest path from vertex u to vertex v, nor vertex v is on a shortest path from vertices u to w. If delta u v is even and delta u w is odd, then Delta tag u w equals to delta u w divided by 2 rounded up equals since delta u w is odd delta u w plus 1 divided by 2 which is greater or equal to delta u v minus 1 plus 1 divided by 2 which equals to delta tag u v if delta u v is odd and delta u w is even then the roles reverse 
and delta tag uw is lesser or equal to delta tag uw. But there is another helpful observation. If delta uv is odd and delta uw is even, let vertex x be the neighbor of vertex v that is on the shortest path from vertex u to vertex v in graph g. So delta ux equals delta uv minus 1. Since delta uv is odd, then delta tag uv is greater than delta tag uv minus 1, which equals to delta tag ux. This means that for at least one of the neighbors of vertex v, the inequality delta tag uw is lesser or equal to delta tag uv is strict with no equality. Let and v denote the set of neighbors of vertex v in graph g. Notice that size of n v is equal to the degree of vertex v. In our example graph, the size of n of the vertex a was 2 and its neighbors are vertices b and c. Let's return to it. See, this is our graph and c and b are neighbors of a and because a has two neighbors then its degree is 2 and the size of n a is 2 as well. Delta uv is even if and only if the sum of all shortest path indicators delta tag between vertices u and w when vertices w are neighbors of vertex v is bigger or equal to the degree of vertex v multiplied by the length of shortest path indicator in graph g tag for delta tag uv. You can write this equation the following way. Here it is. In other words, delta uv is even if and only if. This claim is fulfilled and I will not prove this claim. Notice that this claim implies that the parity of delta uv can be established by considering only the delta tag values and the degree of vertex v in graph g. Therefore, the algorithm APSP1 does not need to know the shortest path between vertices u and v in graph g, delta uv, to determine the parity of delta uv. Therefore, if we can efficiently compute degree v multiply by delta tag uv and sigma vertex w in the set of neighbors of vertex v delta tag uw then by comparing them we know the parity of delta uv and complete our algorithm APSP1 computing the degree of a vertex takes o of the amounts of vertices time. Therefore, computing the degree of all vertices of the graph takes O V to the power of 2 by scanning the adjacency matrix A and so given the function delta tab computing degree V multiplied by delta tag U V for all pairs of vertices U V in V cos O v to the power of 2. Let delta tag be the distance matrix defined by delta tag. Let m equals delta tag multiplied by the adjacency matrix A. The multiplication here is a regular first matrix multiplication. m u v equals sigma of vertices w in the set of neighbors of vertex v delta tag uw. Those given delta tag and adjacency matrix A, the algorithm can compute M with one matrix multiplication and then by the claim mark in 
ping from the previous slide. This one. The parity of delta UV is established by comparing M UV with the degree of vertex V multiplied by delta tag UV. If the claim mark in pink fulfilled, then delta UV is even, otherwise delta UV is odd. We would now see the Seidel algorithm. Seidel algorithm receives adjacency matrix A. Line 1. If A is all ones except the diagonal, which means the adjacency matrix A is the solution for our problem, return A. Line 3. Else, put into distance matrix delta tag a Seidel algorithm which receives a to the power of 2 unite with a line 4 put into m delta tag multiply by the matrix a line 5 for four vertices u v and v line 6 if m u v is lesser than the degree of v multiplied by delta tag u v line 7 then delta u v equals 2 multiply delta tag u v minus 1 line 8 else delta u v equals 2 multiply by delta tag u v and line 9 return distance matrix delta the runtime of this algorithm is calculated by counting how many recursions line 3 levels the algorithm goes through until the line 1. After i recursions, every path of length at most 2 to the power of i is represented as a single edge. Therefore, if the longest shortest path in the graph is of length d, then the algorithm reaches the base case after log d roundup recursions. The local time cost of each recursive call is O V power of 2 plus V to the power of 2.373 which equals to O V to the power of 2.373 therefore the total time is O of V to the power 2.373 multiplied by log D L that's about it I hope you learned something new from this video and please comment below with your thoughts. First degree studies in university are all about social studies and this project comes to encourage that even through complicated situations most of us are going through right now. Thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, good luck.